Okay. Refrigeration unit compresses saturated R134A vapor at 10 Celsius to 1,000 kilopascals. Determine the required power of the compressor to compress 0.9 kilograms per second by an adiabatic compressor with an isentropic efficiency of 85%. Okay, so this, again, this is a simple question in my opinion. You can start off a TS diagram for a refrigeration, refrigerator, but we're only gonna have the compressor, only dealing with the compressor. Okay, and we know that if we have an isentropic uh, compressor, that means that my second state is gonna be the one that I just drew, but if we have an actual one, we do, Going to have something like this, right? So this is going to be our state one. This is going to be a two S. This is going to be a two A. Okay. Now, what do we know? We know that the um, initial state is saturated vapor at ten. So if I'm drawing my dome here, it means that my dome hits precisely that guy there, right? Right on top of that guy there. I'll probably do that even better. Do this really. Okay, so that means that I can, my state one is pretty much defined, right? I have, it's a saturated vapor and it's at 10 Celsius. So my state one is defined. Now, state two S, what do I know about state two S? I know the pressure will be a thousand kilopascals. And I also know my entropy will be exactly the same as the other entropy, right? That's pretty much what 2s is. And my actual one, state 2 actual, okay, will have the same pressure of the 1,000 kilopascals. And we'll, we don't know any other information about it. So what we can do is, we can do is, we can calculate, we can go on to the table, since the one is, this one is defined completely, we can go onto the tables and grab for this guy here, we can grab its enthalpy and we can grab its entropy. Right? I'm actually gonna do that in reverse, put the entropy on top. Entropy and its enthalpy. Now, once I have its entropy, then I can use that to go on and define the second state here. And once I have this second state defined, I can define, I can put down its entropy there. Entropy, sorry. And once I have its enthalpy, I can use that enthalpy to calculate this enthalpy here if I want to, right? Because I know the isentropic efficiency is just a relationship we just talked about that on the compressor. We just talked about that on question one is gonna be the two S one, two A one. one. All right, so as long as I can grab the um, H2S, I can grab H2A as well and completely define my state two A. Now we're looking for the required power for this compressor to work power okay power 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 so we're looking for watts and we know that that power is related to this jump here right so this is just this energy in this uh, jump here according to the mass flow rate so what is the required power for the compressor the compressor the power for the compressor is just the mass flow rate times that difference there so that's going to be h2a minus h1 Okay, so if I can get, I have mass flow rate already, it's been given. So if I can get, if I can grab H2A minus H1, I solve the problem. Okay, so I'm gonna go, let's go down, down to the tables and let's have a look at the um, saturated vapor at 10 for whatever this is, refrigerant 134A. And this is where, I don't know, 30, 50 percent of students, they're here already, right? Looking at the saturated water, so like, ah, let's grab the value here. No, right? So let's not do that, right? We all can do. That's why I always try to write down the uh, substance I'm dealing with at some point, or just highlight it so that I don't do those kind of mistakes. Right table, right temperature. So my enthalpy is. Enthalpy is saturated vapor, 256.22. And my entropy is 0 0.9661. So let's write those guys down. Let's write those guys down.
Um, go away, go away. 0 0.9266 kilojoules per kilograms Kelvin. And enthalpy, I might just move this downward so it's not overwhelming there. Enthalpy is 256.22 kilojoules per kilograms. Okay, now, now that I have my entropy, I have the state two completely defined. Okay, and I'm gonna show you guys, we're gonna have to do a little interpolation, um, but you guys are also sick and tired of doing that, so you know to do that better than I do, right? So we're gonna look first at a thousand kilopascals on the pressure table, so not this table. Temperature table, no. Pressure table, okay, pressure table, thousand kilopascals, so that's our second state. And our entropy is 0 0.92 something, right? So our entropy is greater than the entropy of the saturated vapor. So we know this guy is superheated, okay? If you look at the drawing on the TS diagram, you would know that already, but we always have to make sure, right, before we do wrong assumptions. So this is indeed superheated, so we're gonna be looking at A13. And on A13, I'm gonna be looking at one megapascal, right? So yeah, one megapascals and I'm looking for 0.92, so it's gonna be between these two guys here. So my enthalpy will be between 271.73 and 282.76. So I just have to interpolate between these two values here for the entropy that I have, and grab what's the enthalpy for, sorry like that, for my state 2S. Screen share, please. Okay, oops, that was not on purpose. Okay, so let me um, drag this, these guys to this side. No, not all these guys, just, no, no way. Just these guys. Okay, so what we know about this state here is that if you're writing entropies here and enthalpies here, my entropy on one of them is 0 0.918, the other one is 0 0.9526. And this is 271.73. This is 282.76. And so I'm going to be interpolating for 0 0.9266. And I'm going to be grabbing the enthalpy value for 2s of whatever that is. I forget. 274.45. Okay, so our last step will be to define this state too. Okay, so we know based on this equation here, we'll do this in different color, we know that 0 0.85, 85% of the efficiency equals um, H2S minus H21 divided by H2 actual minus H21. Now, you're more than welcome to keep going on this math and actually calculate this and then go and plug this guy in to there. But note that what we're after, in reality, is precisely the term that we have in that equation. It's H2A minus H1. So you could save yourself some time if you wanted to, and you could simply go, okay, H2A minus H1 equals um, H2S minus H1 divided by 0.85. Right. So I don't. I, I can save myself couple of steps so I can just plug that in there so that means that this guy over here will be mass flow rate divided by my efficiency times h2s minus h21 you save yourself some time let's put in the numbers that we have uh, 0 0.9 kilograms per second uh, this guy s is 274 0.45, the other one is 2556.22, and we're dividing all of this by 0 0.85. This is kilojoules per kilogram. So, kilojoules per kilogram. 
kilograms kilograms and we're going to be left with kilowatts which is great because that's what we're looking for so this guy the power of the compressor equals 19.3 kilowatts Right, so that means that if we had an isentropic compressor, let me do um, 19.3 divided by, multiply by 0.85, we would only need 16.4 kilowatts. But since we don't, because of those irreversibilities, we actually have to put about three kilowatts more of power into that compressor. Right, not as straightforward in my opinion. 